Scott, life has changed dramatically for all of us in light of COVID-19. How have Greater Bank's priorities changed as a result? Like society, um, things have changed a lot for Greater Bank. Um, quite clearly, we're very focused on what has been very difficult times for our customers. You know, a lot of our customers have lost their jobs. A lot of industries have completely closed. And that's obviously re resulted in quite a lot of anxiety for our customers around their financial circumstances. And as an organisation, we've had to refocus really quickly around our resources and our capacity to assist our customers as best we can through this period of anxiety. Greater Bank was out of the blocks pretty quickly in terms of that customer relief. Firstly, for uh, personal customers, what sort of things have, has Greater Bank put in place? Yeah, look, we've, we've rolled out a number of initiatives to support customers. Some of those revolve around reductions in interest rates for particular products where customers are heavily impacted, like our business uh, loan products. Mm. We've also reduced our interest rate on our credit card product to 0%. We've introduced a range of repayment holidays and, and opportunities for people to defer repayments on their lending products, again, relative to their specific circumstances to give them that flexibility and that um, ability to get through the anxiety of this difficult time. A big focus of the government and also the entire banking industry has been small businesses as well. Greater Bank has a lot of small business customers and uh, no doubt they were part of the relief as well. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the first steps we took was to reduce rates by 1% on our, on our business loan product, but also more specifically to work with customers around their individual circumstances, whether that's restructuring or, or entering into arrangements to defer re repayments with our business customers to give them the best opportunity to get through this crisis and come out the other side importantly as strongly as they can. What's been the response by the customers to this relief effort? Yeah, look, our customers have been very positive. We've had very, very good feedback from our customers in terms of our response and how we've supported them through this uh, through this journey thus far. I'm very proud of the fact that, you know, up to this point in time, we've been able to uh, address and, and, and pretty much put in place the hardship measures for anyone who's asked for it at this point in time. I know there's a lot of other banks out there that are still struggling to deal with the quantity of hardship requests they've got coming in the door and to respond to those and address them. We're well and truly up to date with the with all requests that we've had from our customers in that area. We've seen a lot of changes within the, the business at the moment in terms of how we're operating. What's what's driven that change? Look, it's, it's principally driven by the needs of our customers ultimately and, and what they need from us to support them through this difficult time. And that will continue to occur as this plays out. You know, our customers will continue to, to adapt in terms of how they need to interact with us and what they particularly need from us. And we need to remain responsive to that. It's hard to know at this early stage where business life and businesses are going to head in the next few months. Is there more hardship opportunities in place at the moment or will it be a sort of a case by case as this thing continues to roll out? I think there's absolutely opportunities for us to continue to assist our customers where required through this, but I think it really needs to be focused on need and very much tailored towards pe people's particular circumstances and that's what we'll continue to focus on to support people around their particular circumstances and hardship through the duration of the crisis. You mentioned about plenty of changes within Greater Bank as well and I suppose one of the biggest changes has been the way people have been transacting. With social isolation means we're telling people not to leave their house, not to go into branches. That means that uh, they're transacting other ways as well. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, through the duration of the crisis and, and as uh, the social distancing measures have increased over time, we have seen decreasing levels of traffic within our branches um, and increasing levels of traffic via other means where people are, are transacting digitally or online. That's resulted again in, in some changes to the way that we operate within the business. We've uh, made some changes, particularly to our operating hours within our branches to adjust mm. to that change in usage of the branches by our customers. And that's meant that we've been able to redeploy those resources and those capabilities to support customers in other ways, either in terms of being positioned to take phone calls from customers to assist them around their problems and inquiries that they have specific to COVID-19, or to accelerate the way that we've been able to respond around things like hardship relief and requests. What about for yourself as CEO of a major organisation? You're also a dad tackling homeschooling and the likes. How have you found the, the work-life balance at the moment? Yeah, look, it's it's been interesting. I'm not going to quit the day job and become a teacher anytime <laughs> soon. Look, there are some positives. I think at the moment it, it is refocusing a lot of us back around family life at the moment and uh, and the nightly um, Lego challenges and, and so forth that come with that. And there's aspects of that that I'm quite enjoying at the moment. And it is really a bit of an opportunity to refocus around some of those important things. We've got a quite a diverse customer base at, at Greater Bank. and. Plenty who do rely on the branch network to transact every day. What have we been able to do to support those customers? In relation to those customers, we're trying to 
give them the utmost confidence that they'll continue to be able to transact as and how they would like to. There's a lot of people who are obviously reliant upon cash, uh, and obviously there were some concerns early on in the crisis around uh, the usage of cash and be people's ability to use cash via various uh, shopping uh, facilities. We, we've actively moved again to support those customers where we can in terms of uh, issuing them debit cards and giving them other mechanisms and means to, to access their money uh, during the, the duration of this crisis. You mentioned about communities. Greater Bank has prided itself a long time, or for a long time, of uh, supporting the communities in which it operates. I suppose with the priorities of the business now, will that community support still continue? Yeah, look, absolutely. We remain absolutely committed to the communities in which we operate. We may have to change or adapt the way that we're able to support communities in the in the more immediate term, particularly in relation to the impacts of social distancing. But we're talking with a number of the different partners that we work with and support to, to work out other ways that we can potentially support and assist them at this point in time. A lot of changes to the organisation and the operations, uh, the relief for the customers. The reality is it, it all comes as a, as a financial cost to the business. How is Greater Bank shaping up financially through this current crisis? Oh, look, financially and operationally, Greater Bank is in incredibly strong shape. Uh, as, a, as an organisation of, of about 800 people, about $7 billion worth of assets, it's, it's very well positioned to support the communities in which it operates through this crisis. Absolutely no question whatsoever about the, the ability of Greater Bank to sustain and support its customers and its communities through the duration of this crisis.